Okay, so welcome back and let's keep going. So, as we keep taking a look at some of the other options in here, we have things like radius that you'll see does the spread, and it really only matters for more of things that are area based because this one is based on this angle of the cone, then we don't really need to worry about that too much, at least not on this one. The cone angle, however, does change things drastically. Changing that spread will allow more to be illuminated, and as we can see in our quick render, it's going to do just that. After that, we have the lens radius. We don't need to worry too much about this for now, because we're not going to see too much of it take into effect. There will be a little bit of blurring and a little bit more focus based on it, and it changes the spread just a little bit similar to what we would actually have for like this penumbra angle, where it focuses more so here and then gives a fall off based on that. But for us, we don't need to worry about it too much. Aspect ratio we can kind of ignore for now. And then roundness is going to try to change a bit of the shape of these edges. Okay, next up we have the color. Well, obviously color will let us change what color we want to illuminate onto the object. So now I'm flooding things with red, and it's really hard to see, so I'm going to bring it back to white. So let's actually go ahead and just skip color for the moment and come down to intensity. So we have intensity and exposure. Intensity is the power of the light, and the exposure is a multiplier of the light. So at 1, changing this to a 10 is going to change a lot. But, with it at a 1, and if we change exposure to a 10, we can see it's about the same, but this only went up by 2, and this one went up by a multiple of 10. So if we change the exposure to something like a 16, it's going to be drastically different than if we did both of them increased. And if both of them are increased too much, we can kind of see an idea of it here, but it just is a little bit much. So be careful with exposure being set too high because it can just hurt the scene very, very quickly. And I may have just crashed, so give me a moment. Okay, I think I'm okay now. So be careful with the exposure, because it can very easily just increase things too much. Now obviously, you yourself can increase things too much with basic intensity, but try to adjust exposure less if you are able. So... My intensity, now at about 100, is still not even close to how it was when I had this set to a 10 for the exposure. We can see the quality is a little rough, but that's actually part of those render settings we had before. So we can open those up and change a couple of them real quick. Okay, so we can come back to this still. Let's try something just a little bit better. So I'm going to set everything to a 6 right now. Except the preview, because I don't really care about that. So I'll hit render, and now we can kind of see how everything is going to look at a much higher quality. Now in doing so, it's going to slow down everything just a bit. So I'm going to pause it, let it run, and then we'll see what it looks like when we come back. Alright, so I've let this run for just a bit, and we can see that the quality on the shadows has increased pretty well. 
but I also decided to drop these down just a little bit for time's sake for our little test and preview through here. And you can easily see how just increasing these values is going to drastically slow down the entire render. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Get rid of that. And I'm going to bring my settings back just a little bit. So I'm going to go about like this just to speed everything up and yeah that's still good enough to get an idea of how everything's looking so back into that active shade one for myself I'll set these values a little bit lower but we don't need to worry too much about all of that okay so now that I can see really the big differences between all the stuff I have, let's go ahead and see a few of the other options we still have in here. Well, like we had before, we had the color, so let's go ahead and change it to something like green. And you see we flood everything with green. Now, for the materials themselves, our little option to keep that color white is letting it to letting it adapt to the light that's being shined on it. If we change that to something else, the color combination could reflect back as something a little bit more strange. So I'm going to keep this as white for now. That said, if we are trying to make some mood theoretical lighting like that, well, we could mix in just a little bit of blue if we wanted it to be something a little bit more like an underwater scene. Or if we were dealing with something like the desert, we'd come through and give everything a bit more of an orange tint to everything. Which is just kind of some of those little tricks that they use in the movie industry to kind of help emphasize what the area's kind of like. But for us, for the most part, we can just leave it as white and call that good. We also have... A few other options in here with these presets. With these it allows us to simulate some of these other colors and some other options based on what kind of lighting we want to put onto it. And this is pretty good if you can find something that's real close to what you want. And there's a good number of different options, but overall we can choose our own colors or even just a color heat intensity by picking Kelvin. But that's completely up to you. That said, the lower the number, the warmer the temperature, theoretically. And then higher in this number, the cooler the temperature, theoretically. There will be a few things that can change this based on your other settings. But once again, for the most part, we just need the basic color. After that, we have the rendering for samples. Well, this is really just going to increase the quality. Specifically, as you can see it pop up here, for shadows. And as we saw before, the shadows weren't exactly the best. So increasing these a little bit is going to be pretty good to help you out. That said, down below we have shadows themselves which allow us to actually choose if we want them or not. And realistically, we're going to want shadows for more accurate scenes unless you're going for a specific art style. Density kind of lets us choose how much of the shadows we want, whether we want full shadows or kind of half ones, but overall, we can probably just leave that at 100. I'm sorry, at 1. All the other options in here are things we will revisit a little bit later, but for now, I'm done with this option. So I'm going to go ahead and, in here, come back to my top, I'm sorry, my type, not top, and I'm going to choose Sky Dome, because this is the only one that's going to be very different, apart from Mesh itself, where Mesh allows you to choose an object to become a light and emit light itself, Sky Dome is going to try to create an actual sky and light. 
So when we first do this, you will see there's a lot of problems with it. But there's a lot of settings we need to change also. So first off, I'm going to choose preset and have it at daylight because that's, you know, kind of what we're doing. But we also are going to have these for intensity and exposure. I'm going to bring my exposure down to a 1. And doing that, you see, we're starting to get all the other colors back also. And I'm going to put intensity at a 1. I'm actually going to close this for a moment and zoom out. And just move my light a little bit up further away. Okay. So now if I take this and I move it somewhere else, like down below. You'll see everything is still colored, even though there's theoretically this plane that's going to try to block the light. Now, that's because in doing so, this has created something a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and actually just delete this light for the moment. Go back into my Create, Photometric, I'm going to choose this one, the Sun Positioner. Well, in doing so, obviously, it gives me all these options, and I'm going to choose to install the Sun and Sky. So now when I render, I'm going to get a much more lifelike and clear system for that sun and sky. Okay. So now if I zoom in, I look around, do all the things I need, and re-render this, we will see much higher quality lighting that should simulate real life as best as it can. Okay, so we got that. I'll come into a low angle, come in here, and let's look out to the side, do it again. And you'll see that it does indeed give us a bit of this guy in the background. And for making higher quality renders, this is an easy way to get that on there, but it does slow down the system just a little bit. Not too bad, but let's get back now to some of those settings on the materials that we have some of these extra options on here to really make some comparisons with. So I'll zoom out just a bit. We got that big light. So now let's go back into our material editors themselves. And in here, I have all those options that we left ourselves with before anyway. Well, now that I have all of these better, higher quality lights and everything, better simulations, I can go through and change some of these other things and just see how all it's actually going to try to change the objects. So with a lower roughness, I'll get a lot more of the directed shine from that sun in the scene. I can bring my metalness down, my IOR up or down, kind of just whatever it is I want to do. I'll max out that metalness. I think that's what I had before. Bring it down, give it a second to update, and go through and just change some different aspects to see how everything's going to look anyway. Now, with some color combinations for things like black on there. With a combination of roughness, metalness. In the IORs, we can create a number of different objects, whether we want things essentially become as black as possible, all the way to changing some of this as if we want it to be almost a mirror.
Okay, so next what it is we're going to do is take a look at... So I'm going to go ahead and set my IOR to something really big like 25. And I'll go ahead and hit the active shade. And in doing so, we will start to get reflections off of everything else around us. Now I can keep taking this higher and higher for as much as I want to do. And the more and more of it that I do do... I'm not sure why it's not auto-updating up here now. Oh well. But the more of it that I do, and the more of it that I add... It's going to give me something closer and closer to like chrome. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to something like a blue here. Just so we can see those reflections a little bit easier. And with the IOR and metalness and all of this stuff set to these different aspects, we can create like perfectly reflective mirrors. Now, depending on the colors and choices that we make with all of this, if we set it to white with these kind of settings, then we truly do just have a mirror, which we'll come back to because a lot of these setups are going to be the same thing that we're going to do for water. But there's, there's a few other things we'll see about that in the future. But with these kind of metalnesses in here, we can do a whole lot to affect any kind of surface we want to work realistically any way we need it to work.